Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs and this is my first video in my Gadgets and Gizmos series that I'm starting. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to show you how I use my various tools, Gadgets and Gizmos, in my junk journaling. Uh, some of you may have these, some of you may not. So if you've got these, um, you might find some new ways of using them. If you don't have these products, maybe you're considering getting them and you're not quite sure whether it's the right thing for you. And if you can see all the different ways you can use them in one place, it might help you decide. So, we'll crack on. These are some of the bits and bobs I've been making. This one's just a basic little tag. And if you can see, I've used the envelope punch board to shape the top. Here we've got a little mason jar with a pocket and some doodads in it. This is the file folder that prompted me getting on with this series because I was asked how to make them using envelope punch board. Uh, another thing I made, uh, I was making one of mason jars and I thought, hmm, it could look like a perfume bottle. Now I think that looks like a perfume bottle, especially if I stick a big bow in it. What do you think? <laughs> to me it's a perfume bottle. So, yeah, let me know in the comments if you think it looks anything like one. I mean, it was a last minute one, this. Uh, when I was just doing my last decorated one for this video. So that's as far as I've got thinking that could be a perfume bowl. It's cut out and there's a bow on it, so we'll see. But yeah, that brings me to the bow. A lot of people have showed you how to make these bows. In fact, other people have showed you how to make most of what I'm going to be showing you today. Uh, we all have our own different ways of doing them sometimes. With some people put in little bits that others don't. In fact, Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah made one of the mason jars, but it was slightly different to mine. All on the basic theme though. So we'll be doing the bow. Uh, we'll also be doing one of these cotton bobbins, I think that is. There's one like that and then there's another one here. Yeah, that's handy if you're storing two or three different types of trim on one card. That could be if you've got quite a lot. Or if you're storing the flat ribbons, you don't want all these little doodads on the side. Oh, that's a blank mason jar. Yeah, the first one I made, I actually put down the measurements of the card. But then I made another one completely different. So you don't actually need measurements for this. You just basically need to know how to deal with the corners to get the different shapes. This one is a little camera. You can see, I did use a die on that as well to cut a hole out of the middle. A little journal card, you could have it that way. It doesn't have to be a camera. It could just be a little window journal card with a tab on the side. You could perhaps put some acetate in. You could put another little layer on the back, acetate in. You could make it into a little shaker. Yeah, we could have a shaker camera. We could put little people in. <laughs> Shake them about before you take the photo. Yeah, I'm getting daft now. Uh, and this this is a big journal card. Journal card, yeah. A big file folder that you could even use for a journal cover rather than a journal card. Uh, some more smaller ones I've made. Yeah, I got a bit carried away with these. If you look, they're all slightly different. On those, that tab lines up with the edge. And this, you see a lot more of that one. On that one... They were both cut flush. There's just lots of different ways you can make those. And is that it? Oh, I did a little, a little bobbin. Yeah, just with two on. Right, first one I'm going to show you is the file folder because that's the one I was asked to show. So I've got this cut ready. I'm going to make it from this. It's this is a digital by Artie Mays. I have no idea which one it is. I have got so many Artemisia's kits that I've always got a few left over when I do a project and they all just get stuffed into a box that says Artemis. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I think if you look for the actual kit and you want the actual kit, the little paint swatches are on the cover, cover page on her site. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did have a good word with that frog after the last video and it's just made a little appearance. <laughs> I think I've been talking too much. Right, we're going to start off by I'm going to have the tab 
at the top on the front and at the bottom on the back. So we need to put that in our envelope punch board and we need to line the edge up right in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. As I say a lot, we're not looking for perfection. And then punch. When you bring it out, you can see you've got that shape. You've got the curve and then a tiny little straight bit. Then I'm not even going to measure how big I want the tab. I'm just going to randomly think, yeah, I want it about there. And that's going to be my tab. I'm then going to turn it around. That is then the bottom of the back. I'm going to start by punching the centre again. And then I'm going to move over. I just want to make sure I've come past this bit. Well, I'm saying I want to make sure. I don't need to make sure. If you look at these I've made, some tabs overlap, some don't. I'm going to do it. Yay. About there. Punch. There we go. Next thing I'm going to do is bring in my craft knife and my safety ruler. There you go. <laughs> I have to have a safety ruler to make sure I don't slice my fingers off. We're not going to A&E today. Right, you don't have to line this up on your mat. I just find everything easier. Everything has to be lined up. So the ruler is going to be lined up with the top edge of the tab you're not going to take off. And the indent there. Yeah, that's what I'm calling the indent. The bottom of the bit you've punched out. So when you line both those up, you'll find that it's an even distance all the way down. Then I've got my craft knife at the ready. I'm just going to slice that off. You can do this with scissors, you can do it with a trimmer. The way I have done it before is with... Uh, I've got one of those Fiskars trimmers where it's a pointy little blade and you can pop it down where you want and just cut bits out. But the blades are so expensive. I don't have a good blade in. I use it now if I really want some jagged cuts in a grungy junk journal so the old blades do come in handy don't throw them away right, i'm now going to cut off this part on the back i i always cut towards me then there's no danger of going too far and cutting the bit that you don't want to cut put that down while you're getting your ruler straight you might end up slashing your wrist girl there you go and i'm going to cut it worked there we go and i'll hide the blade to be a good girl so there we have it you've got the tab at the top on the front the tab at the bottom on the back and i haven't decided if i'm going to line them up what i mean by that is if you see line them up so they're both flush or you could do that i think i want these flush so i'm going to line my corners up and then I'm going to crease. If you know before you do the tabs that you definitely want them flush, you can fold your card over first. You perhaps get a better crease if you do it in your scoreboard, but there you go. Oh, where's my, I'll get this bone folder. I think I've been really tidy. Yeah, I have. I've put the bone folder that belongs with the envelope punch board back in. That almost never happens. There we go, crease that. And now we have a little file folder journaling card or a little mini journal. Or you could just put some tea dyed papers in and it could be a little notebook within your project. So that's that one. So what we're done, we've done the file folder. What we're going to do next, I'm going to do the bow next. Yeah, I like the bow. And it's coming up to Christmas. You could, I like to wrap a lot of my presents in brown paper. Sometimes I stamp them, sometimes I stencil them, sometimes I will just put string on and one of these bows really good for it right to do the bow we need two bits of these are scrapbook paper you can use anything i'm not sure if i've cut this one down yet no it's not cut down enough you need one three inches and you need one five inches so i'll just trim that the little bit save that because we're going to need it we're going to use that to wrap around the center of the bow right i'm going to start by punching my long piece it's five inches long so to get the indent in the center of the bow i need to punch that directly in the middle so i'm going to line that up with two and a half inches 
yeah this principle would be the same if you were doing a big bow that was say two inches wide and this piece was i don't know 10 inches long in the middle you would line it up with five so because this is five inches long we line it up at two and a half then i'm going to turn it directly over line it up at two and a half again and punch then we've got the center of our bow now one bit that not everyone does when they're making these is i like to line the edge of my piece of paper with the center and punch again i just think it, it well for me it helps me get my bow more even so that's all four of those done and we're left with that shape yeah you could even make labels with this yeah I'm, I'm only just thinking that now one of those would be quite a cute shape label yeah you could put two holes in there and you could tie it on something with string Ooh, i might do that on my mason jar anyway stop waffling we now need our other piece which is three inches long and again we need to punch i punch in the middle i like that shape uh not everyone does i'll just show you they would put it like that so you can see the back i prefer it like that so you don't have to punch this middle so i'm going to punch this halfway along which is one and a half inches because our piece is three inches wide there we go both sides then to get the pointy shape for the end we're going to line that up in the middle i'm going to guesstimate it don't have to be perfect as i like to say a lot and punch then we've got our point but i didn't get that one lined up too perfect but i don't think bow police are going to come and get me i'm learning how difficult it is to do it while you're constantly talking yeah good enough <laughs> there's another one of my mum's sayings a blind man will be glad to see it i hope my sayings are still politically correct <laughs> right put the punch board away now Ooh, take out your bone fold you're gonna need it I like the shape of the one that comes with the punch board so we're going to take our first piece again and we're going to just curl it breaks down the fibers a little bit and also starts to bend it over so there's less chance of it creasing when you bring it together if you're wanting to make a completely flat project and you wanted it to crease then just it will still crease better when it's already bent you'll get the crease exactly where you want it to be so it's still worth doing this stage. So I just curl that. Then I'm going to bring in my art glitter glue. I'm going to put, I've done really well at this curling. This card does curl really well, this one. Put a little dab there. And a little dab there. Then I'm going to bend those over meet not the no they don't meet perfectly in the middle i'm lining them up with the edges of the bow i'll turn that over and show you what i mean it's just like that because i don't want to, if i go to the middle you'll see those white bits sticking out and i don't want that so that's that hold that for a second or i have this chompy bulldog clip I like to use there you go that'll just hold it long enough to set i'll get rid of some bits and bobs i should have let that glue while i showed you how to do that bit but that that, that would be too sensible that wouldn't it <clears throat> too much common sense involved in that decision right we'll get our little bit i'm going to bob a little bit of glue in the center just extend it a little bit onto there just to make sure this bow is not going anywhere before i get my middle strap on strip on all right then i'm going to put the back side down i can't see if i'm lining this up because i'm not above it so i'm just going to pick it up now and have a little squint this scrapbook paper i'm using is quite it's quite smooth so it doesn't tend to grip instantly but when it does it does so hold that a second 
and I'll pop my trusty bulldog clip back on. Now that little bit I told you not to throw away, we're going to need it now. We're going to use it to make that centre part to wrap around. Now, I'm going to use my scissors, hopefully I can cut this straight because there's checks on this and straight lines. Yeah, yeah not three bad that. Yeah, so bring that back in. First bit I'm going to bob some glue on is the front. You don't have to. I just find it helps me get it wrapped round easier. Neater and straighter. Especially if you're using a paper that grips the glue instantly. So I just pop that across the middle. Yep, and I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to dot a bit of glue on that first one. I can hear my cat meowing outside to come in. She's been snoozing in the garden. <laughs> She's going to have to wait, isn't she? She doesn't have game patient. She's 18 years old and she has turned into a grumpy old woman. It's not too cold out today. In fact, the sun was so bright this morning I couldn't film my video. I only have like a royal blind at this window. So I can't block out the really bright sun. And then, yep, yeah, there you go. That's our bow. Are they twins? Yeah, twin bows. I love these, they're so handy. And the one I've just done, I'm just going to stick my bulldog clip back on now to make sure this doesn't spring off. I know our glitter glue dries quick, but as I've said, my card is quite thin. Well, paper, it's quite thin and it's got a bit of a coating. So there we go, two down. Is it two to go? What we're going to do next? let's do let's do the tag i'm not going to decorate the tag though i'm just going to i think you after watching the one two i've just done you know how to do the tag but i'll bring my board back in and do one anyway it's just something a little bit different piece of card little scrap it were actually a piece left over when i cut the size i wanted for my yeah my what's it thing i'm a jig my mason jar Line the edge up in the middle of the punch and punch. There you go. It's one side. Line the edge up with the middle of the punch and punch. There you go. You could have just slid it along to get the shape on the other side, but I know exactly where I was putting it on my punch. And by turning it over, I made sure I got them both the same. And that's it. I didn't round the corners on this. I didn't think it needed it. Next thing you do is punch your hole if you're punching a hole, as you can see. Punch one and put a little yeah, eyelet in this and then just put a few little bits and bobs on. Yeah, so there you've got a tag. What else have we got? What else did we make? Do you want to see how to make the camera? The camera is pretty easy. Really easy is the camera. Let's get a piece of brown card. I've not prepped to show you the camera, but it's not difficult. I'm going to fold this over first, yeah, with precision, <laughs> there you go. I like this card because it's not too thick, you can do this and the bone fold gets rid of all those little, they remind me of little wrinkles you get around your mouth, <laughs> you know when you fold something by hand, sometimes you've got all these little wrinkles up to it, yeah, anyhow, that's an insight into the madness that is my mind. I'm gonna, I don't know how big I made that one. Three and a half. Might as well do this one about the same. I'm even on camera here. Bringing in gadgets that don't fit on my desk. Three and a half wide. And I made that two and a half deep. I'm including the little notch. Two and a half. There you go. That's not three and a half wide. What, what, what on earth? That's... That's completely wrong bit. What have I done? Two and a half deep, three and a half wide. Start again, Julie. Two and a half. And line that up. Three and a half. Yeah, that's the same size now. Can you see how I said it doesn't matter what size you do your other bits from? I'm going to make a couple of little bobbins from that. Uh, I'm going to make a mason jar with a pocket from that 
and I'm going to make tags from those. And those I could make a craft bow, couldn't I? Yeah, there you go. We're not wasting any bits. So again, I think you can see exactly what we did with this camera. Right. I'm not sure how far I did it because did I write on it? No. I'm going to try one and one and a quarter. No, one and an eighth. I'm going to cut it along by one and an eighth. Not on the folded side, on the cut side. A bit tougher because we're going through two layers. I'm going to turn it over and do one and an eighth again. Then we'll see whether this that was how far we did it. Oh, we've got a small, we've got a smaller top on this camera. Ever so slightly. I must have done it out perhaps one then. Yeah. So bring in the ruler and the craft knife. Line that up. I'm perhaps going to line this up twice. Do it with your scissors. I can't. My cutting is just horrendous. As you saw, I need lines to cut along. Or it's not happening. Flip that over. Line that up again. And cut. There you go. Grab some little scissors. My first cut wasn't the neatest. That reminds me of a song. <laughs> Neaten that up. And then we're going to, I don't know whether my camera actually fits in here. No, it doesn't because of the shape of the top. So I had to bring my ordinary corner chomper in just to round the top up and the bottom. Haha, <laughs> because it's broken, it works. If you've got one of the tiny ones, you shouldn't have a problem. Oh, you can cut it by hand. And then just do that. And there we go. Right, I did... If you look at my original camera, use a circular die to cut a hole out. Now the actual one I saw, they didn't use a die to cut a hole out. They cut a circle out in a different colour and put it on the front. That was my little alteration. So you can do it either way. If you've got a circle punch. Oh, not all cameras have circular shutters. You could have a square one. Do anything you want. That's as far as I'm going with camera. Right, the last one now before we get onto the mason jar is the bobbin. Yep, put away some bits you're not currently using, Julie, because your desk is getting a complete mess. You've got bits everywhere. Put them on the floor while later. <laughs> I've heard them fall. And I'm going to grab a random piece of card. Which one shall we use for the bobbin? Hmm. I'm not cutting and measuring anything for this. What we've got here then? I'll use one of these craft bits that we've got. I think it's a bit long, so I'm just going to trim it down a tiny bit. That would be the world's tallest bobbin, wouldn't it? That'll do me. <laughs> Let's measure how long it is. It's nearly four by just over two. Right, to get the shape of the top of the bobbin, to get it that deep, you need to punch one and a quarter inches from the top of the card. But I'm not going to want it that big because this piece of card is quite small. So I'm going to punch, perhaps, I'm going to do one. Yeah, one inch from the top of the card. So line it with the one inch mark and punch. Yeah, that's going to be perfect for this size piece. A lot of it's just trial and error. Don't be afraid to get it wrong first time. You'll perhaps do it wrong and think, oh, that looks like something completely different. Look at my perfume bottle. Well, I think it's a perfume bottle. I'm not really fussed what anyone else thinks. So we've done all four of those by lining it up one inch from the edge. Now, I have seen these made without the tops rounded, so I'll do this one without the top rounded at first. So, again, craft knife and ruler. Line up the little indents. And then I'm going to 
cut I'm not going to keep saying it into this by hand you perhaps can I can't <laughs> be really careful this time because we're going right down if you're using a craft knife to the other one I'd rather leave it like that a teensy tiny bit shorter than I want than go too far and cut into the bottom of my bobbin line this one up again yeah, I mean real bobbins come in all shapes and sizes don't they so we can make them in all shapes and sizes oh I went all the way oh there you go and that that's a bobbin I'm not going to round the corners on that one so look at that I don't think I need to yeah that's going to be one a little bit different so that can go back in my stash of things that I can decorate another time so we've covered it all now haven't we apart from mason jar which is perhaps the easiest and the only one I'm going to decorate actually I have cut my piece of cream card first and made it exactly the same size as this one put all these ones out at way then we'll have room on our desk I've lost it. Maybe I've made something else out of it. I'm just going to pause and find it. Right, all present and correct. I've got my card. I've had to cut some more. I have absolutely no idea where that went. And I, like I've done now, I cut two so I had a spare. Absolutely crazy. Right, it's gone really dark outside. I'm hoping that you can still see me. I think I'm going to turn my light up a little bit. Oh, that just seems really bright to me. Oh, no, we need that light. It has gone dark. Right, mason jar time. Right, first thing we're going to do is make this shape at top. If I just bring the perfume bottle back in again, you'll be able to see exactly how we did it. Yeah. Like that. Right. So I've got my piece of card. This one is I've just cut in, I can't remember. Three inches by four and a half. But again, don't have to be a particular size. And I can't remember how deep I did that. So I'm gonna wing it. Oh, I can remember. I didn't go right up to the one. I think I just went up. Just remembered. Yeah. I went up to the end of the N. You know where it says score line there? L E I N. I lined it up with edge N, I think. Let's try. Yeah, that looks about right. That's what I did. It's all coming back to me now. Another song, that one, isn't it? <laughs> so we've done both sides and we've got that shape with the indents and the top. Next, it's back to this craft knife and ruler again. Right, it's a little bit harder to line this one up because I've got nothing to line it up with on the bottom. I could use my grid lines, but I am going to eyeball it. It's not my eyes that cause the problem when I'm cutting with scissors, it's the actual hands. <laughs> so that's that side. That one again, that looks about right. And that's that side. Yep, now that's the top of our mason jar. On some at ones I've done it past around the top, on this one I didn't. I, th I think it looks better not rounded actually. My opinion changes on that over time. If you've got any little rough bits, just come in. My punch board, I have to tell you, it is the first punch board I ever got and I've had it since 2014. And I have used it so much and it's not gone blunt. But every now and again I do get a little snag and I've had six years of use out of that. And I used to make and sell cards and I made an awful lot of envelopes. Oh, <laughs> my bow's here. There you go. <laughs> That's how the bow finished. Take its bulldog clip off. Right, there we have our mason jar. What I then use for the front is one of my punches. I've got this label punch. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again and punch a label for the front.
you can use anything you want oh, we've got a slightly different color cream card this time haven't we that don't matter i've got this in lots of shades i've got little pits from lots of packs left so that's our label the top what i did there is i put some washi tape on and i think i might go for the same tape again because then we don't have to spend three days i don't have an awful lot of washi tape she says i don't have an awful lot of washi tape that i like should i say they're all they're like more like geometric i did have a spell of using smash books and i use these in my smash books yeah if you don't know what a smash book is google it <laughs> this video is long enough isn't it Mm, what do I want out top? Oh, do you know what? I like that black damask. Do I? Oh, I don't know. See, this is why I should have just used the same one, shall I? Now I'm going to use that black damask. Oh, I've got another one there, black lace. Oh, quite like that. I'm going to use this black damask. Let's see. If I don't like it, I can cover it up with something else, can't I? So that's the first thing I did. Quite like that. Can't see for toffee if I'm lining this up. I think that weren't bad. And I'm just gonna. I haven't stuck this down with anything else. I know some people do. I don't tend to. What I tend to do is burnish, and I don't seem to have any problems there's things i've put in smash books years ago and they're still stuck <laughs> that could have just been down to washi tape i was using at time we don't know do we i'm gonna wing it i'm gonna live dangerously and i'm gonna burnish it rather than gluing it there you go yeah i quite like that black damask it's gonna give it a different look isn't it i'm then gonna bring in my I think I'm going to bring in a slightly darker ink as well, seeing as I'm using the black. I'm not going to use black. We're not, I'm not going that dark. I'm just going to use my walnut stain in my Distress Oxide. And just... Oh, did we bring it? Yeah, round at bottom, didn't I? Bring envelope punch board in, and I'm going to use the corner rounder on this. Because it fits in nicely. There we go. There's loads of things. You can make boxes and all sorts with this thing. I have done them in the past, but I tend to only make the things I can remember how to make without looking the instructions up again. And then, even then, if I've not made them for a while, I have to refresh my memory. I'll be able to look at my own video next time, won't I? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I do like that black damask. I think it makes it look like a perfume. No, this one's not a perfume bottle. Shut up now. I'm not going to ink back just because we don't need to do that now. I'm going to ink around my little label. Just to get a bit of definition. Because we're using a very similar colour. In fact, on the other one we used the same colour, didn't we? So that's going to go there. I'm going to glue that on now. I just put a little bit of glue on the edges. You might be using a different shape label. You might use a little pocket. You might not want put this on front you could just deck you could decorate this in so many ways you don't have to do what I've done and I'm gonna eyeball that that looks straight enough if it looks straight it is straight my new motto pop that back on there now the top all I did there is wrap a little bit of um my thin hemp twine around it i went round three or four times so make sure i've got enough at that side to tie my bow i'm just going to wrap it round i didn't glue it on i think i would put a dot of glue on it in hindsight just to make sure it doesn't come off this is where i risk wasting some because i can't tie this and hold it on i know I'm going to have to cut it off the bobbin. I could waste like a quarter of an inch here. That would be terrible. I've still got washi tape on my scissors. I'll just tie that. And I'm not... I don't tie bows like everyone else. I can't tie bows properly. I struggled to tie my shoelaces as a child. 
I still struggle with bows now, but I get there. There we go. I'm happy enough with that. Now on that one I did add a little bee charm, but I'm not even going to struggle with that on camera. I could only find my tiny little jump rings and I used a I used a copper jump ring and a bronze bee, but I don't think jump ring, poli jump ring police are going to come and get us for that either. And then all I did is I popped in some bits and bobs. That's uh, I think that could be a My Porch Prince die cut, fussy cut. These are some Tim Holtz ones and I put a little word on. It says garden visitors. That's what gave me the idea to put butterflies and bees on and a couple of flowers and stuck a butterfly there. So it's quite plain. It's not the fanciest thing. So rather than go fishing with something else, I'm going to put these same ones in. Yeah. I know this video has gone on for quite a long time. I don't like them. <laughs> I don't like them in that colour. You know, because I've put the black washi tape on. So I'm going to grab my box. I've just got some random ones out of the Tim Holtz. These are all my bits. I scoop all my bits after a project into a box. And quite often it's like weeks before I then go through it. Oh yeah, I think, oh like, I like, we can have some darker, meaner looking butterflies in this one, can't we? Oh, could it, oh, we don't even have to have butterflies, we could have mushrooms. Oh my, oh I like, oh yes. There you go. That's decision made, it's going to be mushrooms. Yeah. We can also have a flower. We do have some autumn flowers, don't we? I love that mushroom there. I forgot I had those. I didn't know I had them. I remember saying on another video, ooh, when I opened the pack, this pack's got mushrooms. Could we even have a butterfly? We could even have a butterfly. Oh, I quite like that. And I'm going to put another mushroom in there, sticking up. That I like. I'm quite happy with that. Isn't it funny how things that you don't plan sometimes? I'm going to take a bit of that off there, Tim, my old lad. Some of your fussy cuts aren't best of quality, mate. Look at me moaning at Tim Holt, sorry. Yeah, sometimes they don't seem to be... When they've cut these out, you end up with a tiny bit of white at one end and a lot at other. So I'll just come in and cut a bit more off. Yeah, I think I need to cut some off around the top of that mushroom as well. Yeah. Check your settings and your die cut machines, Timothy. Yeah, I can live with that now. I'm going to come in and put a bit of ink on. Just to take some of that white starkness off the edge. The others are from a different pack where the edges are grey, which I didn't actually like when I first opened them, but I do now. Because to be honest, they look exactly like that one looks when you put a bit of ink on. It's like job done. Oh, I'm not putting that in, am I? I'm gluing it on. I've gone, I always go in waffle mode end of these videos. It's like, yeah, finish lines nearly here. Yeah. I've managed to remember everything I was supposed to say. And oh, I'm all happy and giddy. And I'll talk utter rubbish. Pop that there. I like that. And there, we need some kind of word. I don't know what word we're going to use. I don't know what word we've got. I did grab, the word I put on my other one is from a kit from Kelly's Crafts by Kelly. I like lots of her bits and bobs. I've never done a full project of hers. I did buy her uh, junk journal kit. Is it The Witches? Yeah, and she did a gorgeous project with it. And I never even got round to doing it. I'm terrible. That's gone in next year's project box. I can't find any more words. What's this one? Notes. I'm going to do that. Notes. I think notes. Yeah, that looks lovely with it. I'm going to ink the edge of that. And this has turned out 100% completely out of I'm really glad I didn't put a B on now. Because what I want to put on is a mushroom. Yeah. And I think I need something behind that. I need a little piece of uh, something. I'm going to bring in my jar of little pieces of something 
you know when you've got bits left over they all go in this jar and sometime then you might end up doing a project oh what's that is that too red do you know what i don't think it is yeah because we've got the red mushrooms oh yeah i like that that's going on there we're gonna have to bring uh art glitter in for this i mean art glitter does glue fabric and because we're then putting a word over the top if it does bleed through the fabric we won't see it so i'm going with it bit on there i'm quite happy how this has turned out i think i'm going to ditch that green butterfly though I want to see the mushrooms. There we go. Poor butterfly. Oh, you were unceremoniously dunked back into the box. There we go. I quite like that. If I'm making this again, I think I may put some uh, text stamping behind the behind that. I may even we could punch a hole in. Yeah, but I'm quite happy with that. So I, do, I hope you've enjoyed that video. I know it was quite a long one. I kept going off on tangents, but that's me. Someone said they enjoyed seeing how my brain works. Well, you've just seen it in all its full glory today. I just go off here, there and everywhere. I quite often abandon a project halfway through because I've had an idea. <laughs> I've got boxes and folders full of half-finished projects. I will have to do an unfinished project series. They seem to be quite popular lately. So there we have it. You've got your mason jar, which I think are just the cutest things in the world ever. Your file folders. We've done bobbins. Like I said, there are a lot more things you can do with these envelope punch boards. We didn't even get to use it, little one, did we? Instructions on little one do exactly the same as with big one with smaller pieces of card. It really is that simple. But yeah, I've really enjoyed spending what's probably been an hour with you. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please consider giving me a like and subscribing if you want to see more. If you click the bell icon, you'll get notified when I upload more videos. And for anyone who's only just joining me, I do currently, the date is Thursday the 20th, is it the 22nd? Yes, I don't know. What day is it? It's Thursday. <laughs> I've got a giveaway finishing on Wednesday the 28th of October 2020. So if you're watching that between now and then, pop over to that video and you can enter. I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to go and have a cup of tea. Thank you all very much. Bye.